Greetings, my name is Dr. Ome Kongo Dabinga, founding director of Upstander International, where we look at diversity, equity, and inclusion from a leadership angle and really believe that everybody can work together for truly committed to creating communities where everybody can be celebrated and not tolerated. I really enjoyed reading your ACT report and I believe that what you're doing with the Catalyze Tech Initiative is really powerful as it relates to creating cultures of, of inclusive leadership. And I believe that if we look at step one, I just wanna take step one and just step back a little bit. When you talk about the importance of increasing your personal DEI expertise, I want to start talking about the importance of increasing your personal DEI experience first. Because when you're working with, with populations that may feel marginalized or underrepresented, they, in many ways, and I'm speaking as one who's been in these spaces myself, are, are used to seeing people who are not authentic in this work. And as you talk about in your report, we just don't want to check boxes. We want to go beyond that. So what does that look like? How truly are you committed to DEI in your own life? Look at that first before you look at building your expertise. I propose something that I wrote called the rule of seven, asking yourself seven powerful questions that really test how committed you have been in this DEI space in terms of your own life. Now you can come up with the questions, but you have to ask seven questions. Anybody can get away with two or three questions to kind of show that they're committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion. But once we get into that fifth question, question number six, number seven, we see that maybe we really haven't been about that life as we thought. So I'll give you some questions. You can come up with your own, but I'll give you some. What do the authors of the last seven books you read look like? You listen to podcasts. What do the seven hosts of your favorite podcasts look like? You watch television. What does the cast of the last seven shows that you watch look like? Same with movies. Same with theater. You hire people. What do your last seven hires look like? What do the seven closest members of your leadership team look like? What do your seven closest neighbors look like? You're involved in, in, in a religious lifestyle. What do your closest seven congregants look like? You have children in your life. What do the seven authors of the last books you bought for them look like or the last seven toys you bought for them? What do they look like? This is what we're talking about. When you start looking at these types of questions, what do your seven best friends look like? You can really see if you've been living a life that has been committed to DEI. If not, you have some work to do. Yeah, sure, you can't move tomorrow, but maybe you can start looking at some different shows, some different podcast hosts, some different authors to start getting a different experience. Now, once you feel like you're kind of well-rounded in that particular area, it's never a place that we arrive to. It's not a destination. This is about a journey, right? Once you feel like you're more comfortable in that space, then we can start looking at the expertise. And we can start looking at in our organizations, making sure that we're, again, stepping back and going back and making sure that we're in agreement on basic things. One of the challenges I see in so many organizations organizations across the country is that they can't have basic conversations about things relating to diversity, equity, and inclusion because they haven't even come down to basic understandings of what the definitions of the terms they're talking about are. So you and I could be having a conversation about racism and you're thinking I did something that was individually racist and I'm talking to you about systemic racism. Two completely def different definitions. Does your company even have a full knowledge and, or an understanding amongst everybody on the team about what diversity means, about what homophobia means, anti-Semitism, ageism, ableism, right? Because again, if you start from different departure points, you're going to arrive at different des destinations. So I believe that every organization, it may sound simplistic, but you need a diversity dictionary so that everybody who's coming on board knows that this is what we mean when we say we are working to be an anti-racist organization. Not we are an anti-racist organization. We are striving to be an anti-racist organization. We are striving to be a place where no one is discriminated against because of their sexism. And then you define sexism. You have to be able to do that on a regular basis. And that's how you're going to be able to demonstrate inclusive leadership. You know, Dr. King talked about integration being about the the dividing of uh, or the sharing of power, resources, and responsibility. And we have to look at that as, as it relates to inclusion as well. In, in your incredible ACT report, you talked about how in so many organizations, people may have titles, but they don't have power. Inclusive leadership looks like really making sure that the power, resources, and responsibility are being shared. And if you're not doing that, then you're not really having a culture of inclusive leadership. So I believe that if you step it back a little bit, look at your own personal DEI experience, 
expertise. Then you move on to that DEI expertise. Then you look at working with together with your team to coming with to, together on common definitions of terms so that everybody's on the same page. And then you really look at building that inclusive leadership culture where everybody can feel celebrated and not tolerated. We know in this tech space, we are we are one of the areas that do that do not do the best as it relates to this. But with this type of style, with this type of devotion, you can create an authentic work culture where everybody, as I said in the beginning, can indeed be celebrated and not tolerated.